Good morning. It's Monday, the beginning of a new week. Uh, I've got a couple things I want to talk about to you this morning. It is in the wee hours of the morning. I woke up early. Uh, a little bit of a uh, hectic day today, and I think my mind just started working a little bit earlier than normal. So I've got some uh, golden monkey here. I'm enjoying a nice cup of tea, and uh, I want to enjoy some time with you. i got a couple things I, I just want to go over. Uh, one of them is... Um, I've been cutting these devotions uh, twice a day uh, ever since the beginning of the lockdown. Um, my schedule's starting to ramp up a little bit, and I've got to start allocating my time um, a little bit differently than I have had in the last six or eight weeks or so. Uh, so I'll be cutting one of these devotions a day. I'll be posting a little bit later in the day. Uh, I do look forward to spending this time with you. I, I have really enjoyed doing the devotions. Um, but, uh, and I do want to continue it, but it's only going to be once a day. So it'll be posted the same place on the YouTube channel. Uh, I hope you'll be able to spend that time with me. Um, the other thing I want to talk to you about is this. There was a protest in Warrington yesterday. You've been watching the news. You know, uh, the nation's on fire again. As a matter of fact, I read last evening that, uh, protests have spread over to Europe, London, Berlin, um, it seems like the world may be going crazy in the middle of the world going crazy. Um, and we had a protest in Warrington last night. There were some concern from the police department. I got a phone call from them because we're right in the middle of town. And uh, they said that they had heard rumors that were people coming from out of town that were going to try and disrupt things. So there's a genuine, genuine level of concern about safety of the town, the safety of the police force, uh, and I got to tell you, we got a great police force. We have a great police chief. Um, the faith community has a really good relationship with him. Uh, it was just, to me, it was a blessing and it was just awesome that they called. And they didn't, they, they didn't just call to tell us about uh, a possible threat, but they asked for the prayers of the churches in the town. And I don't know there are many police forces in the town, in, in the nation that would would make that move. So uh, we're blessed. Uh, I watched the protest on Facebook. Uh, it was peaceful. Uh, there was somebody trying to cause trouble, but the crowd kind of shouted the guy down and he walked away. <laughs> and so uh, I, I think the most impressive thing I saw, other than the fact that it was, it was a uh, it was peacefully conducted, and people were well-mannered, uh, but they wanted their voices heard, and they had that opportunity to do that. And right there at 4 o'clock, uh, the girl that uh, organized the protest mounted the courthouse steps and made a short speech. It was beautiful, and then invited everybody to walk down to Carousel and have some ice cream. Um, I'm just so proud of living in Warrington at that particular moment. And I think we were probably the only protest in the nation that ended up at the ice cream parlor. Uh, what a beautiful answer to prayer. What a beautiful harmony with the churches. And what great kids we have. Uh, so uh, it, all of these things make me glad to live here, um, blessed to have the relationship we have with uh, the police department, and blessed to have a congregation that prays. I, you know, I put a thing up on Facebook, Facebook, and we got responses right away, and I got a few emails of people were praying immediately, and I just believe that prayer worked. I believe that God answered the prayer and brought us through that safely, and everybody was able to have some ice cream afterwards, and uh, I just think it was a fantastic thing. But it made me start thinking about safe places. And because uh, right now I think Warrington's a safe place. I pray that it stays that way. Um, but how many cities can be said to be safe? Uh, you know, in the Bible, there were cities that were legislated to be safe. They were called cities of refuge. Uh, and we, we see them there. Uh, they're uh, mandated in the book of Numbers. So I want to spend a little bit of time with you talking about that and uh, get yourself something. Uh, let's sit down and be comfortable with each other. Let's start our day together 
And uh, when you're situated, turn to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 35, 35 Numbers. And looking here in verse 9, we'll just read the first chapter here, uh, the, the first verses here under the pericope, cities of refuge. That's what those little subtitles are. They're called pericopes. Um, so starting with verse 9, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, then you shall select cities to be cities of refuge for you, that the manslayer who kills any person without intent may flee there. The cities shall be for you a refuge from the avenger, that the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation for judgment. And the cities that you give shall be your six cities of refuge. You shall give three cities beyond the Jordan, and three cities in the land of Canaan to be cities of refuge. These six cities shall be for refuge for the people of Israel, and for the stranger, and for the sojourner among them, that anyone who kills any person without intent may flee there. So, there were six cities. Um, there was never more than 30 miles in between the cities, and the idea was that uh, God wanted the city situated in such a way that uh, a man could get there in a walk of less than a day. So wherever you lived in in Israel, there was uh, a refuge, uh, city of refuge was no more than 30 miles away. Um, so uh, I've got a map that shows where these cities were when Joshua uh, occupied the promised land. Uh, he did what was commanded of him and establish these cities of refuge. And the whole idea of the city of refuge was that um, if somebody killed somebody and did it unintentionally, um, the, the law in Israel back then said that if somebody was murdered, that the nearest relative of the person who was murdered had to then go kill the murderer. And so the idea of the city of refuge was that if the murder, if the killing was unintentional, uh, that you could run to this city um, and uh, you, would, you would seek refuge in the city. And the elders of the city would then listen to your case um, and you were safe while you were in there. And if they determined that the killing was unintentional, you could then stay in that city and... Uh, be protected from the avenger, the blood avenger. And so you had to stay in the city uh, until a new chief priest was elected. So you, you know, you're separated from your family and, you know, for however long that took. But uh, if a new chief priest was appointed, uh, then you could go home and, um, and you were in, immune from punishment from uh, the blood avenger. So uh, there was a safe place. And, and if you take a look at the bigger picture here, God is creating a safe place uh, for someone who has unintentionally sinned. Um, and there's a picture of safety. There's a picture of refuge. Um, there's a picture of, uh, well, you know, I did something bad, but I, I didn't really want to do it. I, I, that was not my heart. Uh, so there was a place you could go and find peace protection, provision. Uh, and so it's, it's a shadow of a reflection of the safety that we have in Christ. Now, the city of refuge is an imperfect shadow of that safety we have in Christ, but we've all sinned. Uh, we all need to be protected. We all need to be saved. Um, and God has provided a refuge in his son, Jesus Christ. And what we have to do is believe in him, confess our sins, and run to him. And he will give us shelter. He will give us protection. He will give us the safety that we require. And the protection and shelter that he gives is eternal. It's eternal. So we see this all the way back in Numbers. We see this in Joshua. And ultimately, we see it in Jesus Christ. So... Uh, God has given us a safe city to live in here in Warrington. We pray that it stays that way, but we know that that safety can be fragile. Uh, the safety we have in Christ is eternal, and there's no fragility to it. 
There's nothing that can knock the walls down. There's nothing, nothing that can incite God to be angry against us. Uh, he loves us, and he's given us son as a refuge. So I pray that blesses you. I pray that you walk through the day aware of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit and the safety and the refuge that we have in Jesus Christ. God bless you. I miss you. I love you. I'll talk to you this evening.